Just want to say, since I came here in 1948, best thing that ever happened to me, to play here in Philadelphia. A somber hello, everybody, and welcome to Phillies baseball here on WB17. We're at Shea Stadium. The Phillies getting set to take on the Mets, but tonight, the game's secondary. We say goodbye to a member of the WB17 broadcast team, a member of the Phillies family, Rich Ashburn. If you're just joining us here and you're learning of the news for the first time, Rich Ashburn, 35 years a broadcaster with the Phillies, played for the Phillies from 1948 to 1959, passed away last night after the victory. Phillies win last night 13-4. In the middle of the night, Richie felt ill. He called the traveling secretary of the Phillies, Eddie Ferenz. Jeff Cooper, the head trainer, paramedics made it to the room, but by the time they got there, it was too late, and Rich Ashburn passed away at the age of 70. Of course, Richie, a Hall of Famer, plenty of memories to talk about tonight here on our broadcast. Nine times he batted over 300, a career batting average of 308. He won two National League batting titles in 1955. He had 338. In 58, 1958, he batted 350. And of course, He's come into your living rooms as a broadcaster for the past 35 years. In games with Rich Ashburn, it's got to be a very difficult day for you, Harry. 27 years working with his whiteness, and uh, I, I've got to say that all 27 were years of joy with some winning teams, mostly losing teams, but his sense of humor and his flow just made doing the games fun. We look forward to coming to the ballpark. He was a joy to be around. And, Mike, a couple of weeks ago, his daughter Karen Ashburn Hall and her husband Bob had a birthday party for Richie, a belated birthday party, a 70th birthday party. They asked me to write a poem for it, uh, which I did, and if you'll allow me, I'd like to read that poem for you right now. His Cornhusker roots have served him well. The dry wit, the humor, you can immediately tell. But the enduring traits we readily see is human compassion and love of family. The greatest tribute to an athlete and man is that in whatever pursuit he did the best that he can. His charitable efforts in memory of Jan remind us how fragile is one's lifespan. Will we ever forget that August in 95 when thousands took that wonderful drive to Cooperstown, the home of the hall, an emotional time for us all. When his whiteness got his just due, we were not surprised because we knew at Cooperstown on this August day, they honored a man who's a Hall of Famer in every way. And when Whitey turned 70, a pipe or hat I did not send, but rather my lifelong loyalty as a true friend. And now the man all Philly land loved has gone to join Jan in the heavens above. Don Richie Ashburn, by any measure, was a man whose memory we will forever treasure. Good evening, I'm Steve Highsmith. We mourn tonight the sudden death of Richie Ashburn. Ashburn died of a heart attack early today in New York, just hours after doing what he had done for 35 years, broadcast a Phillies game. A double for Kevin Jordan, what an at bat by Kevin Jordan. And Mike Grace is the pitcher of record. He might take that Kevin Jordan out to dinner. Whitey is remembered for his skill as a ball player, his hard work and his humor, and he was the real deal, honest, genuine. The flag was at half-staff, the baseball game secondary. This was a night to remember Richie Ashburn, the grandfather of the Phillies family. The most important thing in his life was that he was alive for his induction in the Baseball's Hall of Fame. It was not done posthumously, and his family was there, and his mother was there. That day I'll never forget, and the fact that he was there for the induction of the Hall of Fame, I think, was important. The remainder of the season, as you see there on your monitor, the Phillies will wear the black armband with the number one on it in honor of Rich Ashburn. A tough night for Harry Callis, a man who's a friend of Rich Ashburn's, a broadcast partner with Rich Ashburn for years and years. We know about the Hall of Fame. We know about all those numbers, the 308 career average. But he's a man you cannot measure with numbers. He's a Hall of Famer in every way. He was truly a joy to work with. and. Uh... Every day coming to the ballpark, we look forward to it. We had a lot of fun, and he was uh, just a pleasure to be around. Made you laugh, had a dry Nebraska wit, and uh, just was wonderful to be around. He would have loved the game tonight because one of his favorite players hit the home run, Rico Brownia. 
I know it was a tough day for you. Unfortunately, in our business, a lot of times we have to do this. You're forced to, to talk to the media and talk to the fans before the game, during the game, and now after the game. Uh, it, it, probably all the emotion that you've given, uh, you can't give any more now at this point. Not a whole lot more. Why did he carry me through? And I heard you guys talking during the broadcast. You said that a lot of times during the season, you're going to blurt out a line that Whitey used to say, and then behind the scenes, you'll kind of wink at each other, and kind of that'll be your way to remember him for the season and for the rest of it, your life. Well, remember Whitey for for days and months and years to come uh, for the pleasure he brought us, and for his one-liners, and for his uh, just the beautiful way he called a game and the beautiful way he inserted things into the game and. Uh, this, uh, we will remember him forever, yes. Thank you very much for your time, Harry. Thank you, Mike. Well, it's been a tough day. That's Harry Callis, Phillies broadcaster, longtime friend of Rich Ashburn. That's it here live at Shea Stadium. I'm Mike Dardis. Reminder coming up later in sports reaction from all around the major leagues, from the L.A. Dodgers, Vin Scully, and the Philadelphia Phillies with Otis Livingston as well. Now back to you, Steve. Well done, Mike. And Harry was remarkable tonight. The flag at half staff at Shea Stadium in honor of Rich Ashburn. The guy that's going to miss him the most Harry Callis, because Harry and Whitey were inseparable for 26, 7 years here? 27 years we worked together, Al. He was uh, my best friend in life, and yes, I will certainly miss Whitey, and um, the total shock, and um, but in the days, and the months, and the years ahead, when I think of Whitey, I'll think of Whitey with so many fond memories, and with a smile on my face, because he just, he was such a joy to be around. He was so much fun to be around. His dry Nebraska wit, his sense of humor, he was, he was wonderful to be around.